Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third video, doing our Sobbles Watch today's third video. So we're going to go through all members of GFS on Sobbles, see what we're all showing um, for the uh, next uh, couple of weeks. And to see if there's any sign of cold weather coming back in the early part of March. And GFS has been flirted with the idea of uh, cold weather, either from the east or from the north, um, into early uh, March. So we'll have a look at that. So we have very extended rain, so it's all very, very unreliable. Uh, this, you know, it just teasers at the moment, but we'll see, you know, what GFS Sommers is saying. Um, very sure. Just say that the first beer release day was the ECM uh, 38. Okay, and we have also released a 10 to 14 day as well. So check out all of today's videos if you'd like to do that. We're going to start off with the GFS operational uh, run. So this is uh, the highest resolution of all GFS ensemble members. Of course, uh, we're starting off here uh, right now. So uh, we've got low pressure coming off the Atlantic. We're in an unsafe Atlantic driven type uh, pattern. Uh, going a little bit stormy there for the early part of next week. That's something that the GFS is picking out at the moment. The chance of some gales, or even some severe gales uh, through, through the early part of next week, Monday or Tuesday. Might be a little bit uh, wild. Uh, then we go on up towards day 10, and we're still looking very flat here, pretty mild, high pressure south, low pressure to the north. Westerners keep driving in. Um, moving into extended range, so we come towards the beginning of March now, uh, no car weather on the GFS operational, uh, run, uh, trials there tonight, it just keeps those westerlies going right way through to, uh, right way through to the very end, uh, keeping, uh, wind in from west to southwest, so definitely no cold, uh, snap for early March on the GFS operational run. Right, that's that one done, let's have a look at the control then. GFS control, and I think we'll start this from around 180 hours. How does that sound? So, uh, this is how we're looking, uh, which will be uh, Wednesday, the 24th of February. So, uh, GFS control run uh, has high pressure uh, to the south of the country, over uh, over Europe. Uh, low pressure is away to uh, the northwest as well. So, let's see what happens after that. So, uh, we pull in something a little bit cooler there from the north as we run up towards uh, day 10. Getting some heights rising out to our northwest, that is pulling wind back into us. So a little bit of a car, so not particularly car, but a little bit of a cooler snap, let's say, uh, around day 10. Then high pressure over country, trying to get to some parts of Scandinavia. So that's having a go at getting the wind in to the east. Um, so it could go a little bit colder into uh, early March, but it's not a particularly cold easty that we have there. Just some chilly and anti-cyclone with risk of some uh, frost. So perhaps hinting at something a bit cold at the beginning of March, but but definitely no uh, sort of um, you know dramatic cold easy and lovely. Right, so member number one has us uh, looking mild and unsettled uh, at 180 hours on the 24th of February. Low pressure continues to uh, rattling from the Atlantic as we move up towards day 10. Staying uh, flat as a pancake. Uh, it is pancake day, of course. So staying as flat as a pancake. We've got some member number one uh, right way up to the beginning of March. 4th of March, where we get to uh, today with the GFS and its ensembles. So member number two, uh, mild southwesterlies uh, on the 24th of February and low pressure continues to drive in from off the Atlantic as we go to uh, day 10 and beyond it. Staying flat and westerly into the early part of March that keeping things mild as well on some number of two. On some number of three uh, looks uh, unsettled for the 24th of uh, February. This looks like it's moving jet stream southwards uh, a little bit around day 10. It's going to try and pull in uh, something colder, but I think actually this one is just very unsettled and a little bit on the stormy side uh, as well. So wet and windy, rather maybe uh, a bit a little bit stormy uh, there as we go into the early part of March with ensemble member number three. Ensemble number four, wet and windy for the 24th of uh, February. Uh, we carry on pushing through. And again, uh, westerly is continue uh, up to and beyond. Uh, day 10 uh, so quite unsettled quite stormy here as we come to the end of uh on time number four which gets us to the uh, fourth march not much away of car well with that one uh on time number five looks like this uh wet and windy for the 24th of uh february we find as we get to day 10 and beyond it we get some higher pressure uh trying to ridge up from the south but still generally unsettled still quite westerly polar vortex is back in business by the way that's these purple colors here uh around greenland as we go to the beginning of march so so we haven't seen much of the polar vortex um this winter but as we go into spring the polar vortex is well and truly back 
in a uh, business and continue to drive in these races. That one also keeps us wild up to the beginning of March. Oh, so cold weather, yeah, it is there. Uh, on some area six, uh, with uh, South Westerly is here on the 24th of uh, February. What happens after that? Let's have a look. So some heights rising to our west around day 10, just putting in something a little bit cooler from the north. But uh, overall, this is still pretty flat, pretty westerly, and generally quite mild as we go into the opening days of March. With Ensemble Memorial 6, right, Ensemble Memorial 7. Are we going to get a cold one in a moment? Let's see. Ensemble Memorial 7 uh, with West South West Lids. On the 24th of February, what's going to happen after that? We go flat again. Flat as a pancake, uh, with low pressure to our south, high pressure to our north. And it's generally quite mild and spring-like, really, as you move into the opening days of March. That's how we're looking to get to the end of our summer. Number seven, looking mild with that one, too. On some number eight, uh, with south westerlies and wind and rain uh, for the 24th of February. Uh, beyond that, we find that low pressure continues to rattle in off the Atlantic, all looking very Atlantic-driven, generally mild, till the very end, which gets into the opening days of March, a little bit cooler from the north, uh, with about a slight cooler snap from the north on some member eight. Ensemble member number nine, uh, with South Westerlies here on the 24th of February, looks very mild. Uh, that one, doesn't it? Man, high pressure sort of takes over across the country. Around day 10. Ah, now this one's trying to get up to Scandinavia. So this is, from a cold perspective, this is probably the first one that we've seen that is pulling in something colder from the east. This is, this is successfully pulling off a Scandi high and uh, delivers easterly winds. So that's the first one that's turning cold for the beginning of March. With cold east, it probably brings snow, showers to the east before something milder arrives from the south. That's the first one on some memory of nine. Just pull off uh, a cold snap uh, from the east at the beginning of March. On some end of the 10, uh, with uh, high pressure to south, low pressure to north on the 24th of February. Happens after that. Well, we stay flat and westerly with low pressure continuing to rattle in both the Atlantic being further bouts of wind and rain. This one also building up some higher pressure from the south into early March, trying to get it up towards Scandinavia. This one doesn't pull off an easterly, though. It just has an has this other ridge of high pressure, so that one is uh, keeping uh, the tennis dry a little bit colder, but but not a real easterly. Uh, ensemble member number 11, again, South Westerlies on the 24th of February. What happens after that? Low pressure rattles through, um, and we keep wind basically from off the Atlantic, so this one's keeping it my right way up to the beginning of March. Ensemble number 12, with uh, wet and windy weather through the country as we go through into uh, uh, towards day 10. High pressure begins to build up from the south. So this one's trying to turn us uh, dry. This one's getting a high pressure Scandinavia as well. So this one is pulling in easterly winds also. The coldest of those easterly winds across southern eastern parts of Europe. But that one is, is a colder one as well. High pressure turns us dry and frosty beginning of March. A little bit of retrogression being suggested there with high pressure trying to get up towards Iceland and Greenland. That one could be setting up a prolonged cold spell. Uh, ensemble member number 13. Again, low pressure is rattling in both the Atlantic Kingdom is mainly dry and uh, Kingdom is mainly wet and windy, I should say. Uh, moving up towards the end of ensemble member number 13. Heights uh, rise through the country. It turns mainly dry and settled for early March. That high is possibly going to try and reach to Scandinavia. We would know more. Uh, a day or two further on. On some member number 14, it looks stormy on the 24th of February. Severe gales there and heavy rain uh, as well, but at least it would be mild. Uh, we go through towards day 10, uh, keeping it uh, mild, but turning a little bit more settled uh, around day 10 or just after it. And then high pressure, uh, sort of sitting close to the country as we get towards the beginning of March, mainly dry, probably a bit colder in that ridge with some uh, frost. On some number 15, halfway through, uh, looking wet and windy on the 24th of February. And we keep it on the south as we run up towards day 10. And beyond it, with low pressure, continue to rattle through, bringing further bouts of wet and windy weather right way to the very end of Ensemble Member number 15. Ensemble Member number 16, uh, again, looks unsettled for the 24th of February. Beyond that. We get high pressure to our south, low pressure to our north, so uh, it's unsettled and it's mild. The high pressure is trying to get to Scandinavia as the end of the beginning of March. We're trying to get wind into the east, 
basically turning dry and probably with a continental flow, frost by night, but pleasantly sunny by day. I saw men number 17 looking wet and windy on the 24th of uh, February. If you enjoy this ensemble to watch, by the way, please smash the like button. Let us know what you think. And make sure you subscribe to uh, the channel. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, I saw men member number 17 men builds high pressure strongly over the top of the country for the beginning of March. Turns us mainly dry. There could be frost with that high pressure, but by day would be very pleasant. I saw men number 18 looking uh, wet and windy, maybe even a suggestion of a bit of. Uh, bit of a storm for the 24th of February. Beyond that, uh, we find low pressure continuing to try and push uh, through. Um, heights are rising to the north with this one. So this is having a go to get us into a blocked or blocking that much colder scenario. That's the first one we've seen that's really setting up proper northern blocking again for early March with high pressure from Greenland over towards Scandinavia. So that one is trying to get us into a prolonged cold spell. Haven't seen many doing that so far, though. It's an outlier, I think, so far, anyway. On somewhere at 19, uh, westerly, southwesterly winds uh, around 24th of uh, February. Westerly continue up to day 10. And beyond it, uh, high pressure rain just uh, building up across the country into early March, turning us mainly dry and settled. On some moment of 20, uh, again, with uh, low pressure, bringing further wet and windy weather uh, uh, before day 10. Then heights rise to our north and west, t try to turn wind to the north as we get to the end of February. And this one's having to go at pulling off a Scandinavian high uh, as well. So that wants to pull in something a little bit colder from the east with number 20. On uh, some moment of 21, Again, looking rather flat, rather wet and windy as we go up to and beyond day 10. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's just a little bit stormy uh, there. Uh, we move on um, into the end of Ensemble Member 21, and we're building high pressure out to our northwest and pulling in something colder from the north northeast. That one is also turning a little bit colder for early March. Ensemble Member number 22 has a high pressure ridging up from the south, and then that high pressure builds through the coach, turning it's mainly dry. We'll be Frosty by night and about high pressure pleasant by day. I would have thought that high pressure sticks around into uh, the early part of March. On some number 23, again, looking quite mild uh, around 24th of February uh, with winds in from the southwest. Into early March, we take high pressure out to our west and try to pull in something a little bit colder from the north. So that would take a little bit uh, colder. By the beginning of March, with that ridge of high pressure. On Psalm 24, again, unsettled uh, as we go through into 24th February. Closing days of February look like that. Lots of high pressure domination. High pressure is trying to reach north as well, trying to pull something in uh, a little bit colder from the northeast. Generally, uh, just anticyclonic for early March, and probably with frost by night. On some number 25, uh, again, looking rather flat, rather westerly uh, as we come into the closing days of February. What's going to happen as we get through to early March? It just keeps it mild and Atlantic-driven, uh, really, with more low pressure. On some of number 26, stormy on the 24th of, uh, of February. Beyond that, high pressure builds up from the south, turns us mostly dry. It will be a little bit colder and about ridge of high pressure. Scandinavian high is attempting to get going to our northeast, but uh, overall that one keeps us mild to the very end. On some of the moment of 27, uh, colder northwesterly for 24th of uh, February. Beyond that, we've got uh, low pressure bringing uh, southwesterly winds. As we get into the opening days of uh, March, it looks like trying to build some higher pressure in uh, Scandinavia. But not really pulling in anything cold from the east. Maybe a little bit cooler, though, from the north. Ensemble, ensemble member number 28 <laughs> looks like this. Uh, high pressure building up around the country at day 10. That high pressure go anywhere. Interesting. Doesn't look like it will. It just stays generally quite flat and rather westerly. Up to the very end. Uh, it's pretty mild, um, but with high pressure for early March. Ensemble member number 29. Again, southwesterly is. Uh, of around the 24th of February. And then into the end of ensemble member number 29, uh, what's going to happen? So it's going to stay west of the heights. So are trying to rise a little bit to the north, but still generally Atlantic driven and pretty mild. Ensemble member number 30, lastly for the GFS ensembles, westerlies dominate up to uh, day 10. 
And uh, beyond that, we're going to try and raise the heights to our north. So high pressure building around Greenland and Iceland. And this one, or something number 13, is turning us much, much colder by uh, the 4th of March. So as we go, with winds coming in from the east, that is a much colder ensemble member. Let's have a look at the ensemble graph, shall we? See how that's looking. So uh, here we go. Then we we'll to go to 850 HPA and precipitation. So, uh, yeah, you know, uh, generally trending milder than average. I think we established that the trend with the GFS ensembles is milder than average from beginning to end. There are still the colder outlier members for, like, the very end of February into opening days of March. But the R ensemble major, which is the white line, indicates that most ensemble members are keeping things mild even into the early part of March. So we continue to have a possibility of something colder at the end of February into March, but it is only that, only a possibility, only a suggestion. And the most likely outcome is that mild weather will continue into uh, early uh, March. Just have a look at the 12Z GM, uh, see what that one is uh, doing. So we want to go to hover and have a look at the E7, then we're done. So uh, this is the GM again, all looking rather Atlantic driven, mild westerly, bit wet windy though as you run up towards uh, day 10 with high pressure south, low pressure to the northwest. And we'll have a look at the ECM WF and then I think we'll call it a day. So this is the ECM 12Z, which has just finished updating. Again, low pressure out to our northwest at the moment and will continue to be so over the next few days being plenty of wet and windy weather uh, across the country as we run up towards day 10 very mild southwest of there early next week again and up to day 10 uh, east end builds up an area of high pressure turning us drier and about high pressure there might be uh, there may be some night frost but by day because it's like the end of february sun's getting stronger now um, it will be pleasant by day, probably seeing a temperature at around 9 or 10 degrees. But again, there could be some frost and about ridge at night. Weather beyond that, the ridge will go anywhere interesting. Whether it will go to Scandinavia, whether it will go to um, Greenland, you know, we can't say. That's as far as we get to uh, with the ECM. So, yeah, it looks like the Westies are going to go on. Uh, does it got through all of that in 17 minutes? I think that's pretty good going, I have to say. Uh, it looks like Westies are going to go on uh, now through uh, the next uh, next week, maybe next 10 days. So, more mild uh, westerly Atlantic trim weather to come. Um, we may be seeing a suggestion here, but at the end of February into early March, it could get colder, either from the north or more likely, I think, from the east. Um... But it's only a suggestion, it's only a possibility. And the most likely outcome, clearly, is that we actually keep things pretty mild, even into the early part of March. We'll keep your data about all of it, of course, at Gow's Weather. So keep checking back to all the videos and the live streams. And, um, and yeah, we'll, we'll keep you updated as all the developments uh, continue. Tomorrow we're going to have the uh, USA forecast of very, very dramatic weather over in America. Possibly, at least partly, responsible for this flipping to mild weather that we've seen. So uh, there's a huge cold spell in golf in most of the states at the moment. A extremely severe cold weather in America. We'll be discussing that in our USA forecast. Um, and of course, we'll be live streaming uh, tomorrow night from 6 o'clock. We'll have a Wednesday night live stream. Um, won't be many more Wednesday live streams for a little while. I'll, I'll stop doing those uh, for a couple of months, I think, through the spring. But I will do one tomorrow and probably the following Wednesday. Then that might be it for a couple of months. But anyway, Wednesday live stream coming up for you um, tomorrow from 6 o'clock. So I'll see you then. Um, but, uh, but for this video and for today's video, so that's all for now. And thanks for watching.